What's up everybody? Next step of the Tornos GT13 installation, getting air to it. So when we install the lathe, we gotta go through this installation checklist that says, actually, let me go get it real quick. All right, oh, it's nice outside. All right, let's check this out. Step one, clean the machine. Install leveling shoes under the machine, check. Install main breaker on the wall, check. The electrician came in the other day on Friday and installed it, put power to the machine. You're supposed to put power to the machine, not turn it on. So we did that. Da -da -da. Provide a proper ground. Supply air to the machine, which is what I'm working on right now. Supply necessary oils and lubricants, yep. And that's it, and then I fill this out, I send it in, and then they can schedule the proper installation. Get the guys to come in, take the um, shipping brackets off, get it leveled, get it set up, make sure it's got oil where it needs oil, get it ready. So hopefully they can schedule that really soon. So trying to figure out where this machine needs air. Air inlet, air outlet one, air outlet two. I thought that was kind of interesting. Quarter inch MPT for air inlet. And I was like, what's, are these switched outlets? Like, does the solenoid valve turn it on at, you know, when necessary? But, crawl it inside here. They're just all teed together. So, uh, air inlet on the right now, and then left and uh, center and left are teed off of the air inlet. So, they're just air, shop air. So I went to Fluid Line, I got myself some fittings, everything I need, I got some 3 8 tubing. So air has to come from that port this way to the machine, and then also the bar feeder has a little air line as well. On that note, astute observers of our channel will notice a big yellow thing that used to be right here that is now gone. So this big old chip blaster, like we were saying in the install video, we didn't know where to put it. Um, it's gonna live here-ish, you know, maybe over here, tuck it in a little bit. It's got all the cooling ports going this way, so they gotta face that way. Um, yeah, so this guy's on wheels. It's gonna tuck into there. Really nice. Our air compressor was right here, but I came in yesterday and was able to pallet jack it over, 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 over. I'll show you where it is now. This way. Ta -da. It's pretty happy right there. So when the electrician was in to do the wiring on the machine, I had him run a wire uh, up, 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 over, 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 through a little hole in the wall into the other shop and prep it so I was able to plug in the air compressor with three phase 220 power. And then I also teed off of the airline. If you look, not that drop, but it's like right behind Eric right there. Uh, I dropped the line down. You can see that blue line right there into the other shop. So now it's got air. So it was kind of a big deal doing it by myself, but uh, it was good. Now it's moved, it's plugged in, wired, no problems. Now I can get air to the machine. So that's what I'm working on right now while engraving 1776 for the 17th time and making Norseman screws which will soon be going on the Swiss machine. First thing I noticed is that the fitting I bought, these are quality Parker fittings, it only threads in like not even half a turn until it gets stuck. I mean obviously it's NPT, it's got to be tapered but I start tightening it, it's it's not tap deep enough. I think I'm gonna have to tap this guy deeper because it's not even getting up to the thread sealant. It's only holding on by basically nothing. So I'm gonna have to tap that, blow the hole out. I think if I blow air in from here, it'll flush out any chips. Do that, then I can start running some tubing. Angelo just brought up a really good question. If the machine is actually tapped with a BSP, BSPT fitting, not an NPT fitting. So I gotta check that because I don't wanna tap like the wrong, the wrong thing here. But quick check, the plug that came out, uh, this was in there, it came out nicely. This threads pretty nicely 
into this fitting. So I think we're good. Like that feels all right. I think we're good, but one of those things, it is a European machine. It might be a thread that's not NPT. So things you gotta watch out for, for sure. Today is Tornos install day, it has power. Lights are on, control is on. Yeah. So now that the lathe is coming together, the last few things we have are uh, getting our tooling set up, which will be the next thing, and how all the high pressure coolant lines go in, and the collets that go in here, so we're waiting for those to come in. And then once we have all the tooling and collets set up, we can get our training on. And we did uh, install our Blazer Swiss Lube Oil GT10 or GT13, I can't remember. And it uh, works great. Clear. Very excited because next week we have training scheduled for Monday through Thursday. So our Gen Swiss tooling has come in today actually. And uh, hard inch collets are in. I think I have basically everything I need to get this thing rocking. So if we can start installing that, I think we're out of time. Today's Thursday and then we just got Friday. Eh. We'll find some time, but um, training next week, we'll pick, I think we've already picked that we're gonna make stop pins first, and uh, there will be more videos to come. So stay tuned on this Swiss lathe journey as we become Swishish, as uh, IMTS 2018 <laughs> so so lovingly coined. Um, yeah, stay tuned, more, st more stuff to come. <laughs>